Welcome to this edition of Midday Mentors. I'm Richard Farrow. I'm the CEO of APMG International. And today I'm delighted to be joined by two people. We have Victoria from Training Bite Size and we have Gemma from Grace. And I'd like them to introduce themselves and their businesses. Victoria, could I start with you? Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what uh, Training Bite Size do? Yeah, of course. I'm Victoria Graham and I'm the Managing Director of Training Bite Size. So we're a family run business that have been in this industry for around about 30 years now. Um, we specialise in online training, project programme, IT service management in particular. Um, and because we're a family business and we've got a nice team of, you know, 10 of us, we really aim to, um, you know, interact with the customers and give the best customer service, um, constant support. Um, and just try and be the whole package. And I am a bit of a perfectionist, so um, I like to have things done and as I would expect it to be done. Um, so when I'm a customer, I expect a certain standard and I expect our customers to have that same standard for us. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. Thanks very much, Victoria. So Gemma, what's it like working with a perfectionist? So you know, what do you do and what does Grace do? So Victoria's perfection really shines through because the quality um, of online learning that Training Bright Size provide um, is fantastic. And not only sort of the, the content and kind of the quality and the polish of the content, um, but also kind of the level of which the content is engaging and appeals to different learning styles. So, yeah, that definitely shines through. <laughs> So, so Gemma, what did, what did Grace do? I understand you clearly have a passion for taking young people and, and enabling them to, to move into the world of work. Is that something the business was set up to do? Is that something you've always done? Or is that a recent um, move to what uh, sort of Grace is about? Yeah, so that's always been the fundamental principle of our business model. And so essentially we're a consultancy business and we have a three year development program. Um, and so we support our graduates um, through three years of training and that's in project management, business analysis, data analysis and, and technology roles as well. So, for example, like software development. Um, so for our analysts, they get the opportunity to not only work with our fantastic clients and work on these huge transformational programs, but they also get to gain industry recognised qualifications. So it's a real win win for them. And then for our clients, they get enthusiastic, um, energetic people who are extremely talented. Um, and it's a flexible resource model for our clients as well. That's a cost effective one. And um, it's a sustainable model as well, because the majority of our analysts do transition into permanent client roles, which is a real win win. So I wish Grace had been around when I graduated. <laughs> that, that's excellent. So, Victoria, what's it like when you're running programs for highly motivated, intelligent graduates who have got lots of energy and enthusiasm? compared with maybe a training course that might be populated by less willing learners shall we say so does that does that spin off on the on the coach on the facilitator um yeah i mean a lot of the online courses are standalone so they don't tend to rely too much on a trainer which is the beauty of it really because it can just fit into any time learning a trainer's there if people need that support but we find, um, you know, with Grace, they are happy just to take the course and learn the content because those individuals that are studying are, you know, they're enthusiastic and they're willing to learn and they just fire through the courses without needing too much intervention. And they obviously, you know, are used to taking exams and are very, um, you know, they're used to that kind of environment as well. Um, and they just, yeah, they don't tend to spend too long completing a course and just crack on with the exam. Um, compared to someone that might have been told they need to study the course. <laughs> um, they drag their heels a bit. They're not quite invested. Um, and, you know, they just require a little bit more of a um, encouragement to complete the course mm. and the exam. Gemma, we live in, in times of COVID-19 and uh, the country's been in lockdown for a while. You know, there's a thought we might be coming through to the end of it. 
I passionately believe that every cloud has a silver lining, that although it's devastating for some people personally, and clearly it's been very devastating for some businesses, there's also some quite positive things about, you know, people's ability to move online, to work online. Are you seeing that change with your with your clients and and how are your the people that you place with your clients, how are they sort of move into this much more world of remote working? Yeah, so um as you say, I think it has um been a challenging time. But one thing it has forced us to do is to adopt flexible working. Um, so, I mean, we've got 300 analysts based at, at Grace. 300? 300, yeah. So, um, I mean, we working with our clients, we mobilised 300 people working from home, which was quite a challenge in itself, but <laughs> we got there. <laughs> um, and I think it's been great, though, as you say, like there's some silver linings here because flexible working has promoted a better um, work-life balance, um, and we've seen an increase in productivity as well. I think, you know, with people being less tired because they're not commuting um, and they don't have the same office distractions, although I am missing those, I've got to admit. <laughs> yeah. I know what you feel. I mean, Victoria, you've always worked online. You know, so this this uh, move towards online working, probably no different for you. You've always been delivering courses online as long as you've been in business. But you know, has that been good for you because you were there at the outset and therefore you didn't see any real change in business activity? Has it been good because your clients saw that you were a leader in online learning? Or or has it been negative because customers have been looking at training as they often do and thinking, well, we reduce our training spend because it's one thing we can reduce. You know, where's the silver lining for you in all of this? Well, it's a whole mix of what you've just said. <laughs> every scenario. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we have been providing that online training, you know, well into the 90s. So we've always had off the shelf online products that have just evolved over the years. Um, I mean, we've got very technical animation now and, um, we use a lot of video and so yeah that's kept us going through these past few months a lot of people can't be online doing virtual training with a trainer at a set time so that's a small part of what we're doing but what we've seen an increase is with consumers that are self-funding and trying to improve themselves and make this into a positive experience for them. You can either sit back and do nothing, but our training bite size mantra has always been never stand still, and we haven't stood still. <laughs> so we've just strengthened everything we can over the lockdown. So marketing and development into new courses, new titles, um, and giving away a lot of free training to people that need it at the moment. So that's been quite important. So yes, we have seen a decline in the corporate side of our business, um but you know we've just stayed positive our customers have a very similar mindset because those people that have been buying over the lockdown you know they're using this as a positive change um and they're not standing still either you know they're going for their next job they're going for a promotion they're going you know they're improving their skills and that's been quite like warming to to see and work with those people so it's, pos it's been a positive for us yeah thank you Victoria says about they've offered some free training for people that need it and you know, we can all expect quite a lot of people to be looking for new roles and new opportunities at some time later this year if the evidence is suggested there's going to be growth in, in unemployment. Your main focus is on graduates. Do you see you extending your business model to, to have a program for helping people from work back into work as a reskilling activity for analysts into your client group or do you think your your main business will continue to be at the graduate level? Um, I think for the imme immediate future it will continue to be focused on the graduate level but who knows in the future you know diversification is something definitely that we're keen to pursue um, but right now yeah, we're just focusing on the graduate level. And have you seen much change in graduates over the years? I mean, are they coming out of university more technically capable, less technically capable? You know, what, what would you compare 
a graduate of 2020 to a graduate of say 2018 what would be the most notable change that you could recognize among them um, I think um, a passion for data, actually, um, and I think there's a recognition that a lot of businesses are data driven now. Um, so, yeah, if we look at the changes that have happened over the last two years, we're seeing people who not only have a genuine interest in data analysis, um, but they've got the skills to match. And that's something at Grace we're really keen to do is kind of build on those fundamental skills that they've developed at university and help to hone them for professional work in life. Interesting. Victoria, one of your most popular courses is Agile Project Management. But do you do things about uh, data analysis or business analysis? Do you get into that that area in the work that you're doing with Grace, indeed to work you're doing with others? Yeah, I mean, Agile Project Management is, um, I'd say, Grace's most um, purchased qualification, isn't it? Um, along with the business analysis course. So, um, yeah, Gemma, I'll let you explain the reasons why that, that is. Yeah, sure. So um, Agile is actually the first course that people do on the development programme, and it's so beneficial for people. Um, I think just, if anything, just um, helping people to understand the terminology. So, like, sprints and scrums and not getting confused with like the athletics and rugby <laughs> <laughs> um, but no it's great because it that course helps people to understand roles responsibilities processes um, and the deliverables that they're going to be working on and um, I think you know having that knowledge up front not only helps them to have confidence when they land on client site because they understand the terminology and what's going on, but it also means for our clients that people get to add immediate value. Interesting. And is that the feedback you get from other clients, Victoria, about the the overall benefit of agile project management as that all round uh, introduction to the world of projects and maybe even the world of work? Yeah, most definitely. And it is the most popular qualification that we offer. I think because we're in this ever changing world, um, you know, being able to adapt to that is key at the moment. Um, and yeah, it's the figures, you know, in terms of I'm sure your exam statistics can show you as well the, the rise in popular popularity of that qualification. Yeah, we can see it rising. It never rises fast enough. Yeah, it's like you. <laughs> Yeah, we could always do with another couple of noughts on the end of all the orders. That would be very popular. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure we all think that, whoever our clients are. Um, Gemma, what, do you, what would be your advice to, to graduates leaving university this year based on your experience and the clients you're working with? I mean, if you've got 300 analysts that you're putting out to your clients, you must have a pretty good view of what businesses are looking for from from recent graduates. So yeah. Yeah, what would be your advice to a graduate? It's an interesting time, isn't it? I think it's a challenging time. So I think firstly, um, I would say don't give up and be really resilient. And you know, if the first opportunity or if you don't secure the first opportunity, don't worry, it wasn't meant to be. There's gonna be another opportunity that will come along that's gonna be the right one for you. Um, and I would say just continue investing um, in themselves and, and their skills and um, understand as well what their genuine interests and strengths are, whether that's data analysis, whether it's project management, business analysis or, you know, a whole host of, of other specialisms. Um, and there's so many um, resources on there online, isn't there, where people can can learn and as Victoria mentioned you know a lot of organizations are giving away free learning or discounted learning at the moment and just to make the most of those opportunities just to put themselves in the best possible position. Have you ever had a graduate you haven't been able to place with a client? Um, touch wood no we've not. <laughs> nice brilliant. Yeah no. Nice. I mean that really is testament to the program isn't it? Yeah absolutely yeah. And how many graduates could you cope with? Um, gosh, that's a key question at the moment. <laughs> what does growth look like? Um, and there's a few numbers being branded around, but um, I think what's really important for us as a business actually is that we want to grow in a stable yeah. and scalable way. Um, and we want to stay true to our 
um, values. And so I think it's just going to be just organic. Nice. Yeah, organic growth. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and Victoria, what do you think about changes in learning and development, say, over the next year? Yeah, and as more people will be looking to reskill, upskill, we see the, the government mantra about, you know, people need to reskill. Yeah, you know, mm. what impact do you think that will have on, on your business? And, you know, how can you, how can you address that when it's never really clear what skills people might need to be trained in? Yeah, I think um, for us, we're focusing a lot on more the bite-sized learning. So taking modules out of the full qualifications right. and just making it a bit more accessible for people to kind of test the water without making that full investment in a program that might not be well suited to them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, there's so many different areas that people can go into. And I think it's like Gemma says, just really honing in on what are your skills? What do you want to develop? And then um, just giving us a call to match that up with what might be the most suitable qualification, really. Um, but yeah, we're, we are slowly starting to see a lot more interest peaking from the corporate world again, which has been really encouraging over the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, they're realising the importance of investing, um, you know, the, the training within their employees. So, um, yeah, it's it's looking good. And, and do you put together bespoke programmes? So if if Gemma came to you and said, we've got a client that would like um, that module out of that course and that module out of that course and a bit of this and a bit of that, can you actually compile that to a bespoke learning program for an end user? Yeah, we do, and we do that a lot. Um, we've got a couple of projects on the go at the, mo at the moment that we're doing that with um, because that does suit some people. Um, you know, the qualification is great at the end, but for some people that's not priority. Um, it's just taking out the bits that work from the kind of different methods and principles and creating their own bespoke products from that. And we also were quite happy to white label so it can look like our customers' products. You know, we're not precious about our branding about on, on the courses. So, yeah, we're doing a lot more kind of innovating on that side of things. So, so how does a perfectionist deal with white labelling? when the client could take your perfect product <laughs> and, <laughs> and abuse it. How do you cope with that? How do you sleep at night? We're very particular about who we do that with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they ha when normally clients that request those kind of projects are l large multinational blue chip organisations. So we know that they are choosing us because of our perfection. Um, and because they know our courses. So I think we just work with like-minded people in different organisations. Gemma, Victoria said something that could make my blood run cold at times, and that is people want the training, but not the qualifications. Yeah, I knew it was. <laughs> so as an organisation that, that lives or dies on the strength of the qualification, what do you find your clients? Clearly the training is important, because if you haven't got the training, you can't do the job. Yeah. But how important is the certification, the qualification to your clients? So interestingly, I think it's less important for our clients, but more important for our analysts. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, as Victoria alluded to, um, I think from our clients, we tend to get a bit more of a, um, a mixture of skills required. So and I think especially working in change, people want resources that can roll up their sleeves they can do some analysis over here one day but then they can put their governance hat on another day and can pick up project management um but yeah i do think uh, our analysts are really keen to gain those certifications and do they stay with your clients i mean is is your is your model that you place them and hopefully they get a full-time job and they stay with the career with that organization yeah, exactly. And so um, some people will um, be based at one client and that client will work for them and vice versa. Whereas some of our other analysts, they may move around and they may work with two or three different clients right. before they find that longer term opportunity for them. Excellent. Thank you. Ed, would you like to add anything else, Victoria, to the conversation? Is there anything that comes to mind as we've been talking for the last several minutes? that you think um, is pertinent to young people getting back into work or qualifications or training into the future? 
Yeah, I think it's really important, um, you know, that people are focusing on their skill set. Um, some people, like if you've just left university or you're a younger student, that qualifications like this aren't accessible to them. So if they think that, I need them to get in touch with me because, you know, as I said, we are helping people out at the moment um, and we understand things are difficult and challenging. So we we'll, we can help you. Um, you know, we're not we're not money grabbers. We're just here to kind of offer a resource. And if that results in them getting a job or understanding a bit more about where they want to go in life, then that's what we want to do. We're quite passionate about that. Thank you. And Gemma, any closing words from you? Um, just um, a final thought for myself is just really about encouraging people to um, adopt a, a learning culture of continuous development. I think, you know, when you finish university, it's quite easy to think, gosh, I don't want to do another exam again. Whereas, <laughs> you know, actually your professional career is just beginning and gaining qualifications like Agile, APM Fundamentals, BCS Business Analysis, they're industry recognised qualifications and they will set people you know, apart in the market. Thank you both very much. It was great talking to you. It's been fascinating to, to hear from somebody who's placing graduates into the world of work and how positive you are about the future. And Victoria, your, your focus on quality and your willingness to make training available for people that might be less fortunate so they can afford it. Really fascinating insight. Thank you both very, very much. Goodbye. Thanks, Richard. Bye. Thanks, Richard.